what is going on everybody it's craig back with black limited x and in this video we are going to be pretty hands-on because today we're going to be changing our brakes primarily the rotors and pads so i'm going to show you how to do that i'm going to show you everything you're going to need so let's go ahead and get it done all right so we got the jeep jacked up here already um i'm only going to show the front and rear on the driver's side because whatever you do on one side you're going to virtually do the same on the other so i'm not doing showing on four but as far as what you're going to need you're going to need the uh impact wrench and remember for um uh, at least mine, the limited X, I'm assuming it's the same across the board. You're gonna need a 22 millimeter um, socket to get the lug nuts off. Uh, mine has a, a lock on it, so I got this as well. But I got a wire brush, torque wrench, breaker bar, um, socket set. This little thing is a compression tool for the uh, piston, the calipers, uh, is a piston compression tool. Pretty nifty, um, just an extra socket little light just in case i can't see in there you need some grease uh, brake cleaner non-chlorinated you're gonna need some blue loctite as well so let's get it done all right so now that we got the tire off i didn't show that process but um i have a five gallon bucket because when you take the caliper off you do not want it hanging or dangling anywhere because you're going to be putting tension on the brake line and you don't want to do that if you look back here you're going to be popping little plastic cap right here covering the bolt you're going to be removing in there and there's another one right here i don't know if you can see it but it's back here it's two of them you'll see you'll, you'll see them um so we're going to be removing those to get the caliper off but first we're going to actually let me sit this down taking out the speed sensor wire so it's not dangling just remove it out of there like that easy enough so now that we got that out the way I'm gonna pop these caps off right there now I've seen other people say that these bolts are a 10 millimeter um, socket or an 11 but I've seen other people say it's really an 11 now I don't have a 10, I mean, I don't have an 11. I have a 10 and I tested it out and it did work. Like I wanted to make sure, um, so I didn't need to go pick up an 11, but I will pick up an 11 um, millimeter one for future use. But this one is gonna have to work for today. So a 10 millimeter will work. So I break up right here. This is what the bolt looks like. Again, it's, it fits there's some obviously wiggle room and some play so i feel like an 11 millimeter will um get rid of that play but it will work for the meantime if that's all you have but i would go with the 11 millimeter um just so it's a more firm you know tight fit these are fairly easy to get off because like i said there shouldn't be a lot of rust this is a brand new truck essentially still so there wasn't a lot of um problems getting these off and this is the other bolt so got that off through the same lead us with it so now we can go ahead and take the caliper off just wiggle it off oh i'm a dummy there is an anti-rattle clip right there just put a flathead screwdriver in front push it back and they pull right out because you're going to want to reuse you want to save these so you can reuse it so when it's in there you just put a flat head in between her, push up against it, and then it'll pop right out. Once you get this part of it in the hole, because this is hooking in here, so once you like push it over back here, then you just pull it right out. But save these, because you will reuse these. So now that's off. Now we can go ahead and take the caliper off. And there it is. All right, so for this next part, we're gonna be taking off the bracket, this part here. There's two bolts holding it together, right? We're holding it on, but right here, and then the other one is right there. Now, as far as sizing, this is a 17 and a 16 millimeter um, bit or socket, whatever. Um, they both fit, but a 17 millimeter has some wiggle and play, and a 16 mil is firm no play much less play 
so i'm gonna go with the 16 mil if you have a 17 mil it will work but again just like with the 10 millimeter and the 11 millimeter um bits um one has play one has a lot less but they both fit and i think we'll get the job done but we're gonna go ahead and go with the 16 millimeter That's the first bolt. That's what it looks like. Let me get the other one out. The bottom one. <clears throat> and that is the other bolt. And this is the bracket. As you can see, it's still pretty clean. Um, we'll hit it a bit with some brake cleaner, um, but this is still relatively clean. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the rotor off. All right, so for those of you that don't know, on these newer models, to get the rotor off before you can pull it off, there is a small ring, a little seal, that you're gonna have to remove before you can, otherwise you're not gonna get this rotor off. You gotta pull off this little rubber, ring seal or whatever then you can get the um rotor off so get you some small something tiny like that that can get in there and kind of like pick it out and there it is so you gotta take that off first before you can put the and you're gonna read you're gonna need this again because you're gonna need to put it back on in order to get the to hold the new rotor on so set that to the side as well now we can go ahead and take the rotor off. So this one came right off because again, pretty new, um, not a lot of um, rust or anything like that, keeping it on the actual boot or the shoe, whatever. So that was fairly easy to come off. Normally, if it wouldn't come off, you would usually take like a mallet or something like that and give it a couple bing bing, give it a couple wax, knock it loose a little bit and then it'd come off. But thankfully these were fairly easy to take off. So there's that. So now that we got that off, it is still clearly very clean. Um, you don't really need to clean this. Um, if you want, you just take your um, non-chlorinated brake cleaner, hit it a bit. Take your wire brush, go through, knock everything off. So now we can go ahead and get the new rotor on and start putting everything back on. But first, I want to show you guys the compression tool for the caliper. So let me get over here so you can see it. So you can leave this old um, pad on there to help out. Not gonna take goddamn spider. Um, but this is a piston compression tool to help push back your rotor, or not your rotors, to push back the um, the pistons in your caliper because you need to depress or de um, compress them back in in order to fit the new pad in. So you got room to fit it on there. So the way this is used, I'm gonna hold the caliper like that so you can see. But you take this in like that, and then you twist. Start twisting this. And I'm doing this with one hand, so. You're gonna do both sides because you wanna evenly compress. I'm gonna lay it down for now. But you just twist it until this is pressed firmly. And as you can see, already see it's a little bit e uneven on this side now because it's getting pressed in so just keep pressing and once you got it down pressed enough you just come back you don't even got to release it back all the way just enough to move, get take away that slack come on the other side oh yeah you are gonna have to raise it back up because this side is still raised so once you get enough room to get it in there same thing put it on the other side twist until you compress
All right, so once those are compressed, take your tool off. Now you can pop the old caliper off. Oh, I said old caliper off. The old pad off. And then toss it to the side. And before you put a new rotor on, you always want to clean it as well because from the factory, they come with um, oil on it and they may be a little bit dirty. So this will break cleaner. So now we can go ahead and get the rotor on. Now, I don't know what the hell that is. Um, uh, I'll just spray paint it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't really don't care. But got the new rotor on, so you're going to need to replace the ring. So now that we got the rotor on there, just put it on there. Now we're gonna get the bracket back on. Before you do that, put some blue Loctite on the bolts. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put the pads on. Here's the inside pad or the driver's side. It'll sit like that inside of there. The squeaker facing down. Uh, but before we put that on, we're gonna go ahead and grease it up. I'm just gonna grease the ears here and there. And then you're gonna get some grease, put a little on the back there. Do not get any grease on the front. You don't want anything contacting the actual surface area of the brake and rotor because uh, that'll be bad. So do not get any grease on this front part, only on the back and on the ears. So. You want the areas where metal to metal gonna be contacting. You want that greased up. And once you got that greased up, wipe off my finger. And then we're gonna place it in there like that. Simple enough. All right, so same thing for the inside uh, pad. You're gonna wanna grease the ears. Greased up, you're gonna take the pad, face it. This is gonna be so if you're looking right here, this is gonna be facing that way. You're gonna put it in there so the caliper is gonna be like that. So this sits down, and then these little springs, whatever, they go inside of the holes there. So you just pop it right in. Oh my goodness, it's so much easier working on obviously a newer vehicle, but if you keep up with your maintenance and keep stuff clean, it's it's a lot easier. Now that we got those in, we're gonna get the caliper back on. Take it. You just literally put it on like that. All right, so now that we got this caliper back on, we're gonna go ahead and put our bolts back in. So now that those are bolted back up, all you do is put your caps back on. And now we can go ahead and put the speed sensor back into place. As such. All right, so now that we got the um, bracket and the rotor back on, the one thing I forgot to mention earlier is before I put, uh, before you put your rotor on, you are gonna wanna put some dielectric or anti-seize behind the rotor on the hub or the shoe um, so that it doesn't freeze up, seize up on you next time you go to take it off. So be sure to put that on there and, and be generous with it. You don't, you know, it's gonna be fine. So now the last thing we have to do is put the anti-rattle clip back on. Just like that. And there it is, it is on there that simple and there it is that's how you change your brakes and then obviously after that all you do is put your wheel back on so simple enough 
before it gets dark, let's go ahead and hurry up and get to the rear one so I can show you guys how to do that as well. All right, so we already got the tire off in the rear. I just wanted to show you guys. Um, the bolt for the caliper in the rear is a seven millimeter. As you, I got the bolt in there, no play, and it fits right in. And then the other bolt holding the rear bracket in is an 18 millimeter. So just so you guys know, seven millimeter and an 18 millimeter in the rear. And then in the front is going to be an 11 millimeter and a, oh my God, I forgot, but you can just go back and scroll in the video and see. But those are the two bolts um, or sockets you're gonna need to get the rear ones off. So let's go ahead and get it off. And that's the rear bolt. Hopefully y'all can see that. That's the rear bolt. All right, I want to show you guys this. You see where that Allen key is right there? I couldn't get the head of the wrench I was using to get into the bolt because it was like hitting up against this, so I couldn't squeeze it in there. So thank goodness I had the correct size to use um, on the bolt to get it out. So um, obviously if you get a smaller, headed wrench you, you'll be able to get it in there but if not you get a um i forgot to let me see what size this was a one fourth inch allen key fits the bolt so get your allen key it fits the bolt and you'll be able to get up in there uh to loosen it up it'll obviously take a little bit longer because you're doing it by hand um but it'll you'll get, be able to get it done all right, so here's the rear caliper, single piston, um, but same deal. The pads still have a pretty good amount of life left on them, but still want to get some new ones on there. So that's what it looks like. The bracket um, is going to come off next. Here's the old pad for it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that changed out and get the new ones on. I look a little greasy is because I just lathered myself in um, off spray because the mosquitoes were tearing me up and this is the rear bolt go ahead and get the bottom one off and this is the rear one so now that we got both bolts off we got the bracket off and now we got the caliper off we can go ahead and put the thing on the rear there's a ring in the back you're going to want to remove in order to get the rotor off. So again, get you something flat that can get up in there and lift it up. And just pull it right off. Take our brake cleaner. Hit it a bit. This is that anti-seize I was talking about that you guys are gonna wanna use. This is just some liquid wrench, that's the brand. Spread it around the hub here. Let's get the rotor. This is the rear rotor. So now, get that on there. And then we can go ahead and get our ring back on there. Get that ring where it's supposed to go all right so now we can go ahead and get the bracket back on there and get the caliper back on there and get these pads and get everything sealed up but get one of your bolts and start it so you can go ahead and have it started at least now we got that top one started we're going to start this bottom one It's on there along with the Loctite, that should be fine. So, so now that we got that bracket on there, let's go ahead and get the inner pad in. Um, and just so you know, it's backwards or the squeaker um, in the front, the squeaker was facing down, but the squeaker in the rear is facing up. All right, now that we got that greased up, go ahead and get it in, set it in place. Got that greased up. And then put it inside the caliper. It just pops right in. Easy peasy. So now that we got that in, we can go ahead and get the caliper on there and get these bolts back on it to get it tightened down. So all 
All right, now that we got the bracket back on, we got the caliper back on, everything's tightened down. Let's go ahead and put that anti-rattle clip back on. All right, so there it is, you guys. Everything is put back on. Everything is brand new and looking nice. Everything is greased up, anti-seized up, put back in place and tightened. The seal ring is on there. So hopefully you guys watch this video and can do it on your own at home. I wanted you guys to see that it can be done without having to go to a shop to save you a little bit of money. But obviously, if you don't feel comfortable enough to do it at home, please go to a shop and have it done professionally. But with that being said, hopefully you guys uh, get some help from this video. And I'll catch you on the next one.